And I'm joined now by CNN's Nick Robertson, who went on a flight today with the Israeli military, the Israeli Air Force, I should say, to Yemen. Tell us what you saw. Yeah, this was an IDF embed, mm -hmm. uh, allowed to be there, not allowed to take a camera with us, mm -hmm. not, so did not have our own video footage on board this aircraft. But what we were able to see was how they are operating on these long-range missions. Mm -hmm. This mission today to strike Hudeda involved a number of air-to-air -air refueling aircraft, and that's what we were on board one of, uh, and topping up the F-35 fighter jets all the way as they were en route flying uh, on their path towards Hudeda. And it's a, it's a vision into the, the difference between striking Yemen and striking Lebanon, because Israeli warplanes can strike Lebanon's, Lebanon in a flight that lasts minutes. Yemen is a much longer flight of hundreds of miles that requires that refueling and therefore is a much more elaborate operation, I imagine. Much more elaborate, mm -hmm. much more sophisticated, mm -hmm. 1,200 miles. This, by the way, I was told, was the second longest mission that the Israeli Air Force has ever conducted like really? this since 1985 when they struck targets in Libya. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, they fly these aircraft uh, at further distances, but this was the longest combat mission that they've been on. And wow. what the message was here, other than what they targeted on the ground there, the power station, the other Houthi-controlled facilities mm -hmm. in the port city of Hudeda, were, was to show exactly what the prime minister has been saying, that the enemies that strike out and, and hit mm -hmm. Israel, we can reach you wherever you are. Yeah. That was the message. That was the message of how they have the ability to use these fuel tankers to get yep. their fighter jets on station. And the reason they did it now was because just yesterday, mm -hmm. the Houthis fired another ballistic missile at the center of Israel, and they claimed that they'd fired it at Ben Gurion Airport when the prime minister was, was wow. just landing on the tarmac. That's quite a message of its own. I wonder, is that message about the range of Israeli Air Force operations not just intended for the Houthis in Yemen, but also for Iran? It's exactly what I was told, mm. it, not just for the Houthis, mm. uh, for Iran, for Iran to see that Israel is willing and mm. ready and able to reach out. And of course, what, what the IDF explain and say is, the, the Houthis are only able to launch these missiles because they are being brought in by the Iranians because they're Iranian-backed, and the place that they're bringing them in, or one of the places mm -hmm. they bring them in, is the port city of Hudeda, which is one mm -hmm. of the reasons why yeah. they were targeting the Houthi-controlled part of it. I asked them, mm -hmm. you know, w w what do you do about civilians? And they said that's part of the sophistication of mm -hmm. this mission is you time it right to the minute, to the second even, to try to reduce the possibility of civilian casualties on the ground. Right. They say you cannot always uh, mitigate against that, mm -hmm. but they take precautions, they told me, you know, if right. they see civilians there or if they see, uh, for example, shipping close by to right. where they're targeting, they say that they, that, that mm -hmm. they wouldn't strike. So. It's a very important question, I think, to be asking the IDF at the moment about civilian casualties because it's because of the high casualty toll in Gaza, the high for casualty sure. toll that we're seeing inside a of whole Lebanon. New, a whole new bar has been set for civilian casualties. And we see, for instance, in Israeli airstrikes in, in Lebanon that there are times when certain precautions are taken and times when they're not. For instance, there were warnings that went out prior to Israeli airstrikes on weapons depots. Of course, there was no warning prior to the strike that ended up killing Nasrallah. I imagine in that point, secrecy outweighed the risk of civilian deaths. And, and that is, uh, you know, something that was explained to me that, you know, there are there are targets like that where they would describe it as, you know, the golden information. The information mm -hmm. comes in that he's that, that that high value target is in that place. So it's a whole different calculation. A situation like like uh, Yemen today. I was told that if there had been a very high risk of civilian or other casualties they there, would pull back. they would have pulled back. Nick Robertson, fascinating access. Thanks so much.